Hello and welcome to the Up Through podcast. And we have got Johnny Chick back today. Conor Bragg has been kicked out, and John is oh, it's, back. It's a bit, a bit harsh. <laughs> I think, but you know, I'm, I'm, no, I'm glad to be back. I'm glad Colin to be back. Thank job. You. John's back, and we have a guest today. We've got the guest back finally, and we've got Louis Binks. Hello. <laughs> I'm so good, Louis, thank you, mate. Montreal Impact centre back, ex Spurs player, plays for England as well. We went to school together. I'd say, I'd say we were like we were okay, mate. Some people would say so. You know. Yeah, we got along. <laughs> <laughs> He was a bit more clever, so. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. So my would, you, would you get history again, mate? Just like. Oh. oh. <laughs> I'm back. I actually found that. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah but well, one of us is now a professional footballer, and the others are in a kitchen <laughs> somewhere. So, realistically. I was in a kitchen with a TV up on a microphone. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so we'll, we'll get straight to it. I'm, how about going to be the moment? Is it going all right? Yeah, not too bad. I've come back. To the MLS for second season. Obviously, I'm on loan, on loan here from Bologna, so it's a good experience for me um, just to get some games, and then hopefully in not too long I'll be back in Europe. So you're still enjoying it, still, still loving life out there. Yeah, no, it's not a bad life, is it? Playing <laughs> football every day, so no, I enjoy it. No. And uh, you said you got an injury as well. How long? How long's that for? Yeah, I'm four weeks out. Uh, it's my knee. It's not too bad, but obviously with the knee, you don't want to. You don't want to risk it because no, obviously no, it can lead no. to other things. So exactly. that, that, that four weeks from now, let's you'll miss the start of the season. Yeah, I'll miss. I'll miss the start of the season, but I should be back for yeah three games in. I should be back. That's okay. right. Um, well, the, um, who's the manager now? Because obviously, you know, Terry Henry wasn't isn't the manager. To who who's the who's the gaffer now? Yeah, they gave it to the assistant manager from, he's been the assistant for about six years, so he just took over, obviously, he knows all the players, he knew all the new signings, so Mm. it would have been a bit late to go and get a new manager in, I think, so it was natural that he he comes and takes over. What's um, what's it been like under him? Has there been much change or has it sort of been more of the same? No, I think he's tried to implement the same style as what Thierry uh, done last year so it's been been pretty similar no no big changes yet and, and how how's that been for you as well just being a young player i mean i know you were obviously in the U team and pochettino to Mourinho, but that so i didn't affect you as much so how's that been as well no. for you has that affected you have you found it changing up well obviously thierry brought me here so mm. it was like he he was the one that brought me here so i knew him well and he knew me well so it was not it was quite I was disappointed when he left, and obviously it's a big name to work under. So, mm. but no, the the new manager now is uh, I knew him already, so it was it was pretty easy to just transition into that. So yeah, it's been pretty been pretty good for me. What? Well, 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 so, no, you, you want to like, touch upon that relationship with uh, Thierry Henry as well a bit more? Like, did you, what was your relationship like with him? Yeah, no, it was it, it was like it was good. Obviously, it was still player manager relationship. We weren't best mates, not because yeah. you can't be. Yeah. <laughs> no. but, no, he, he uh, obviously I was 18 when I moved here, so he he helped me a lot because um, obviously he knew where my background through Tottenham. And we had the same that like, agent, so uh, he he helped me a lot. And yeah, like I said, it when he left, I was just thankful thankful that he gave me an opportunity to play games. What was it like if we sort of like take it back to sort of like the start of your like career as a sense? When what sort of age were you when you realised you wanted to play football? You like properly enjoyed it was it like really really young like two three four that kind of yeah age? no yeah, i think i joined my first team when i was like five six mm-hmm. okay. but i remember my dad my dad told me the other day i was shit the first time <laughs> I, uh, I went training i was terrible so obviously wasn't gifted straight away so i had to work yeah. it but no i've loved josh would tell you i've dropped school and everything i always mm-hmm. it was always football football yeah did, did you ever think that josh could make it pro anything like <laughs> any signs that he could be playing or he, he, had, he had good work at it. Yes. What was that like, Louis, with the story of, obviously, she said you played for your first club at, like, age four or five, whatever it was. Um, what was what was that like? What was the experience like being picked up for a scout for the first time and everything like that? Yeah, no, it was weird, obviously. When you're that young, you don't quite get it. But mm. You don't understand that I was, I was six and I didn't understand what it meant. I was mm. going to train at... I went to Chelsea first, then to, no Tottenham, then Chelsea, then Tottenham, and I didn't get it. But now looking back on it, I don't think you do understand when you're that age. So yeah. when I got older, I, it was more of a like more of a privilege. But still, you're never in the the first team, so you're just oh. a kid playing for Tottenham. You're not a first team player, so oh, it's not nice. it's not the same as like being a pro. 
how was how was growing up then with it? Like how was it like for you, kind of the the, the struggle and sort of kind of balancing school mm. and football? Because obviously I did know you, but you didn't see like behind that. So how like just give, tell us give a few examples yeah, of just kind of how it was, like the, just how it was balancing. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's, it's weird because like, you know, when you get the six week holiday or whatever, my whole six week would be training. I'd want to go out with my mates down to the park, play football, but I, I often missed out on a lot of things. Like if you wanted to go to, I don't know, a party or you couldn't, you got a game the next day, even at a young age. So your childhood is, you're brought up differently because you have to dedicate so much to football and like you say, balancing school with football. I used to leave school two, three days a week, like, early and I miss out on a lot of school so it's very very difficult to balance that but I think I've done yeah well oh, okay. obviously it's paid off because you're now sat in the position you are and you've worked hard at it but how do you feel like the that shaped you because obviously that's going to have an effect on you as a person um missing out yeah. on like social gatherings like you say but what what effect would you say that had on you in in like the long run what has it taught you yeah. for example well, well even that, even now like last year I know it was COVID and whatever but mm. I went the whole year from February till December. I saw no mates, no yeah. family because of the borders being shut. I yeah. couldn't fly home. So I didn't see anyone for 10 months. And obviously like your mates go out and do things, your family do things. So you miss out on a lot. You miss out on birthdays. I was mm. alone for my 19th birthday. didn't see no one. Mm. So it does take a, like, it's, it's difficult. Even now, like things are opening back up and all my mates are going out playing golf. And I'm, I'm not... Not jealous, but you miss yeah. you miss it. Yeah, of course. It, it's not easy. What was that like then mentally for you? Like, see, when you because you just moved over to to Montreal and you're kind of you're in yeah. like, the lockdown. That must have been very very hard. Like, if you could give it like an insight into like what your thoughts and how you were feeling at that point. Yeah, I was obviously thrown in at the deep end. Really, I was eighteen, moved on my own to a country that is on the other side of the world. They all speak French here, so it's it's very different, a different culture. Um, and I did, uh, I did struggle probably midway through last year. I started very well and then I fell off a little bit, missing home, whatever else. And then at the end of the year, I, I picked up again and I finished the year quite strongly. But I think off the pitch does affect you on the pitch as well. I never used to, when players come out and say, oh, um, I did, I'm having this struggle and that's why it's affecting me. I never really paid attention, but you can see now how players like Jesse Lingard, for example, yeah. United, he was struggling and now he's gone to West Ham, he looks like he's free and yeah. off the pitch is probably better and now he's playing well on the pitch. In what ways did it affect you on, on, on the pitch then? If you give us an example of that. Well, obviously not seeing family and that, because when I was in England, I'd play my game, go out to my family, mm. spend the night with them and go out with my mates and you had like a getaway from football, you know, it wasn't all football, football, football. Whereas now it is very much football, 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 because I'll play the game, I'll go home, but I'm on my own at home, so then I'm thinking about the game. Whereas there's no there's no getaway from football. Would you so are, we, are you saying that would you, would you like finding that balance then? So between kind of you want obviously yeah. you need it to be football, 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 but you need that family aspect as well and friends mm. to get away from yeah. You need you need a getaway, you need something that takes your mind off it, you need something that that uh, makes you happy, you know, like, obviously I love football, even when I'm not playing football, I'm watching football, but there comes a time where, I don't know, even if it's going out playing golf, just getting that four hours or whatever, just getting away from football or, mm. I don't know, having a chat with your mum. I still obviously talk to my family every day, but it's not the same face yeah, time. Yeah, of course, of course. I thought you meant Josh's mum. <laughs> 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 like, I thought you meant Josh's mum. I thought you meant Josh's When you were like sort of, Game playing first football first of all at like four, five, six. Obviously, because you're you're our age. Yeah. Who were the players you were looking up to at the at the time? Sort of who are you looking at? I guess like, as a centre back. Gerard. Mm. Oh, I was looking up at Gerard. Gerard's my favourite player. Mm. Yeah. Um, John Terry. When I when I become more of a centre back, I used to look at Terry, Ferdinand, uh, Ramos. Yeah. More, more recently, but yeah, Gerald was always the one growing up, and then for a defender, it was Terry or mm. or Ramos. Growing up, then, like, what was sort of the, the hardest moment for you? If you could pick one off the top of your mind, like going from you know growing up and you're doing like GCSE, what was a particularly hard moment for you? Uh, when I left school and I moved to Tottenham, mm. I think I was 15, 16, mm. and I moved away, lived with a different family, 
that's hard because you're 16 and you you're okay. living away from home and that was my first real feel but i think that paid off in the long run because it helped me although i was still living with people living with other mm. players it helped me to then move to montreal and Oh. Doing my own. What was that like then when you first moved in? Because we met someone the other day who plays for Sheffield United. And he yes. lives in, yeah, they call it Diggs, didn't they? And he lives in the mm. family. How, how was that like when you first moved up and moved in this whole, in, like, whole new family? Do they, do, it's weird. Yeah, how does it work? It's weird. Do they offer it up to yeah. you and everything? So there's there's families that the club use and the right. club obviously pay them for looking after us, doing dinner, but it's weird because you're, you're in with like another family. You feel like they've fostered you, you know, like they've adopted you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's it's weird, like you have to meet all their family and no, it's very weird, but no, it's, it's a it's a good experience and they, they, they look after me. So did, did, In what way did they help you then? Because the guy we spoke to, he was, he was very like, he spoke very well of his, of like the family helped him out, they helped him massively. But in what way did they, did they help you? Just like off the pitch, they, they're like a second family, you know, like mm. they've got a, is that family um like figure so i don't know just like they chat to you about football they like take you out i stayed in about five or six different digs mm. so every time it was like oh i've got to meet these now i've got to meet their family you've got to know what they do and don't Jeez. don't do so it's <laughs> weird but no they, they help me a lot are you, are you are you still in contact with any of them now like any sort of like contact at yeah. christmas or birthdays Whatever. anything like that one of them was a big Arsenal fan, Arsenal oh. season tickets. <laughs> and, yeah. And uh, when I moved there, she texted me and was like, oh, no way, you're working with Henri, you have to get me course, uh, yeah, like, a shirt. Like, she loved Arsenal, so she yeah. was still... Oh, she's an Arsenal fan. fan. Surely that's not okay. <laughs> that's, like... no, that's why they do it. They move you there with an Arsenal fan so you can oh, get some butter. Uh, yeah. She she could like uh, poison me or something. <laughs> yeah. what, was that, what was that job like then? So you said how hard it was, but on on the pitch and going from sort of because I'm, I'm assuming it comes more serious once you move up there. So what what was that job yeah, like yeah. in terms of like the way like your like football life worked on the pitch, etc. Yeah, it's, it was it was so intense. Like Tottenham, I used to speak to other boys at other clubs and they'd they'd go in at nine and finish at two. Mm. Tottenham would go in at eight, we'd finish at six and like i'm 15 and i'm doing like a i know that's a normal hour day for people but when you're in that intense environment everyone's competing with each other to get in the first team it's very like it can be draining yeah. um could you go on it was did you go on a three uh, day then like how the day would normally go up from eight till six yeah we'd go in at breakfast then do gym before training then train then come in and do gym then go to the swimming pool then come in and eat then do education maybe, then go home, then wait for hours and then they'd drop us home because obviously we couldn't fly so we had to wait for the bus to mm. take us home, mm. like the Tottenham bus. So, but no, it was long days, but when, it, was, it was good. But when you're doing all this work, like if you're 15 hitting the gym, like I don't think I've touched the gym and I'm 19. <laughs> like when you're doing all this work, were there points where, because obviously you see like a lot of people in football don't make it. Were you yeah, seeing yeah. mates who potentially were then cut off the club and were you potentially thinking this could all not be worth it? Were there any yeah. points where you sort of like questioned the decision, like, is this all worth it or were you always set on fully you know, becoming nah, a professional I think footballer? Even at school, like, I was, I believed that I'd make it as a pro and mm. go, like, do well for myself. And if I didn't do well for myself, I wouldn't know what I'd do because yeah. there's nothing else I want to do. There's, I'd done all right in school, but. I wasn't the, just to tell you, I wasn't a kid that could sit in class for hours and hours. Like, no. I don't know how. <laughs> no, nah, I'm just crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so they, but so, no, I couldn't do anything else. No. So then with that Spurs thing, because obviously me and you moved away, and like, was that was that kind of, that intensity part of the reason why you didn't move? Because I know you wanted to move because of your, like, you know, you wanted, they were, I'm pretty sure, was it because they wouldn't let you go out and load? Am I right to say? Yeah, that was one of the reasons, yeah. That I wanted to go out and play. I felt I was ready because I was always playing above my age. So when I was 16, sometimes I'd play with 18s. Mm. When I was 18, sometimes I'd play with 23s. And then I'd done a year, two years in the reserve team. And I thought, right, now I can go out on loan. And they were like, no, no, you're not going. We want you to stay here and work in the, like, around the first team. And I went, but I want to play games. And they said, no, 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 no. I was like, all right, I'll leave then. And then that's how it come about. What were the other reasons then, if you wouldn't mind, if you wouldn't mind talking about it? Like, what sorts you had that, but there was, there was other reasons. No, that was the the main reason. I just felt that 
there wasn't there was no pathway for me to yeah. go and get in that first team. Maybe I'd play the odd cup game, the odd Europa League game, but I didn't want that. I didn't want to be like you see some players now they're twenty three and they've mm. played four games at once yeah. in, in the cup and freeze against the fucking Europa League. Like don't get me wrong, it's a massive achievement playing for Tottenham or any club like that, but I wanted to be twenty four and like established not 24 and just playing a few cup games. It's for your own development as well, isn't it? If, you, if you're playing games, you're going to develop quicker as yeah. well and you're going to become a better player. And they say, obviously, yeah. when you break through, you tend to stay at that level. Like you say, these players... And you look, play at, and... look at managers. They don't... Would a manager trust someone who's got exactly. 60 games at the age of 21 or someone who's got three games at the Lovely. age of 21? Yeah. You're yeah. going to take the one who's got the more games, surely, because he's got more experience, more more yeah, getting knowledge. Class, yeah. How easy was that decision for you? Was it very much a snap decision when they said, no, you can't go on loan, you're going to leave? Or, nah, can I can imagine it was, it was hard. Mm. Because I'd been there so long. I've been there since I was six, seven. So all I knew was Tottenham. All yeah. I knew was yeah. the, the, the Tottenham daily routine, the boys that I've grown up with, uh, coaches who had helped me all the way through. So it, it wasn't an easy decision, but I knew if I wanted to, I had to take control of my own career. You know, I mm. couldn't let them dictate to what I wanted to do okay. and hopefully it will pay off. Did, did that time, did even that so young and obviously like a, a proper move, did that time affect yeah. you like at home? How did that affect you as a person? No, not really. I was, uh, that didn't really affect me personally. Obviously, maybe I was a bit moody every now and then to fix things <laughs> off the plan when I was yeah. trying to leave, but um, they made it quite difficult. But no, that, I, I respect that because obviously they wanted me to stay and yeah. they didn't want to let me leave easily. Obviously, you were at the club under Poch. Was it was it under Mourinho you left? Was it when you left mm. Mourinho? How what was the difference? I was between... with Mourinho about three months. Three months. What was the difference in in terms of at the club? Like was it was the obviously because when Poch left, it was the time yeah. to go. It started to go which results wise started to go downhill. Was the atmosphere different around the club or was it? Not not that I noticed. I wasn't with the first team every day. Okay. I was with them a few times. I trained with them. I trained with the first team more under Mourinho than Poch. Mm -hmm. uh, but the atmosphere, I didn't notice a change. Yeah. Obviously, I wasn't around it every day to yeah. notice a change. Yeah. What was the switch personally like for you then when Mourinho came in? Because I know you started training with the first team more when you did come in, but what was the switch like? Mm. Not, not, not like I say, I wasn't a first team player, so mm. it wasn't massive for me. It's not going to affect me. I'd still like train with the, the, 20, the reserves, so... Every now and then I'd go up with the first team, but yeah, not for me it wasn't that big when, of a transition. When, when you, because obviously, like you say, you'd been in the first team a couple of times, like training yeah. with them. What was it when you first got in there? Sort of what sort of players were in the first team at that time, and were they like welcoming? Uh, was it was the skipper at the time sort of welcoming you in? Was it any sort of ones who didn't speak to you? What was the sort of reception like from the first team? It was never when I went. It was never too welcoming. They'd all say hello, but that yeah. was it. They wouldn't have a conversation. Not that they were rude. They were just, that was yeah. how they were. They got yeah, their yeah, job. Yeah. They were so professional. It was more around the, I always remember Moussa Dembele. It was around when he was still there. I started training Dembele, Kane, Batongan, uh, Danny Rose. Mm. Them sort of players were still winning around it. So, and then when I left, it was more like uh, the new the new yeah, yeah, yeah. Jose, um, I was reading up on it and apparently, so Jose apparently came to you and wanted to keep you. Yeah, did you? Well, drive? I was, I was having the meeting to leave, and I said that I was speaking to the academy coaches and said I want to leave, and they went, okay, hold on a minute, Mourinho wants to come in. So Mourinho come in and sat down and was like, I want like you should stay. I gave around his debut at eighteen, blah blah blah. You're silly for leaving. And I was like, nah, I, I want to go. Um, but obviously, when you hear Mourinho trying to convince you yeah, to stay, yeah. to be, yeah. it's quite. Like you are in Oregon, that's what he's done in the game. Yeah. But yeah, I knew I was very much focused on no, 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 I want to leave, I want to leave. No one would change my mind. And if Mourinho didn't change my mind, I don't think anyone <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> literally. Was that <laughs> surreal for you then? Because obviously growing up, you would, you're watching Mourinho, who's won Champions League, Premier League. What was that yeah. like for you when you see Mourinho and you have a conversation with him? Yeah, it was weird. It was you know, my dad, uncle, agent, and I was more like, like my dad was there and. Uh, when Mourinho bowled in, it was like, Dad, that's Mourinho. I was trying to like give him attention, <laughs> but that, it was surreal. But no, I'd seen him already, obviously, trained with him. But 
I think when you had your family there and Mourinho comes in, it's a bit more like we used to watch him on telly and that. But no, it was, how, was, it was, how was he like as a person? Was he was he like because obviously he wanted to keep you in? Was he very like friendly and welcoming? Was it a little awesome. bit sort of like passive aggressive? Yeah, in the meeting it was passive aggressive, but when I was on the training pitch, he was very much like chatting to me, like because my name was obviously a bit foreign. He was like, "Oh, where are you from? That's Portuguese name," and like having conversations with me, but then. Yeah, he, then when he, he was more, uh, more... Assertive almost. Assertive. Yeah, more assertive yeah. in the meeting, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I, so what were your relationships like at Tottenham with? So obviously you've seen people like Troy Parrott's gone on loan. I know you're particularly close with Walcott as well, who's now on loan as well. Well, um, who, mm. who like, were you closest with and what were your relationships like off the pitch with the youngsters? Uh, my best mate, I still speak to him now a lot, Harvey White is a... Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, I shared things with him. So we he's from Tuxton, obviously, you know, near Rochester. So we used to go in to training every day together. So he was my best mate. Malachi as well, Walcott, uh, Troy. Troy was my age uh, in my team. He was obviously now at Ipswich. So, mm-hmm. yeah, there's a lot of boys that have gone on. Obviously, I knew Skippy, uh, who's at Norwich. He's doing really well. So there's yeah. a few yeah. boys that are doing well who, yeah, who I know through the academy. So obviously when that move came about and you said you wanted to leave to Jose, what was that process like then finding a club afterwards? Because obviously, you, you know, you're a young English talent, you're going to have talent in and around for you. And why did you choose yeah. to go to, you know, Montreal over, over some other clubs? Bologna. Yeah. Bologna, yeah, well, so Bologna, sorry, and then go to Montreal and loan, yeah. Well, they made it, they made it difficult because I left in the January, but they wouldn't release my papers. So... They released my papers in February, so mm. I missed the January window, which meant right. I couldn't sign for any. Uh, I couldn't sign for any European teams because the window had shut. Mm-hmm. But the MLS window was still open until March. Okay. So, and they wouldn't let me leave to any other English clubs because if you, it's a rule you can't go from England to England clubs if you've been at an English academy for so long. Okay. So that, if I was to go to another English club, they would have took it to court. And if they took it to court, they would have demanded like five million pounds. They said, "Ridiculous!" And I was, I was seventeen, eighteen. No one's going to pay that for a <laughs> seventeen, eighteen-year-old who's never played a first-team game. So yeah. I went to the MLS for four months, done, done all right. And then Bologna bought me in the summer. So mm-hmm. Montreal it- and Bologna are linked. So yeah. the owner yeah. owns both clubs. So I knew there was always Bologna could have been watching if I'd done well, and mm. obviously I'd done all right. So they bought me. Well, who was then, so with the January transfer window, did you hold any talks with any other teams like from in within Europe before going to Montreal? Not really. Um, obviously, Henri got the job in Montreal. We have the same agent, so I think I, I wanted to work under Henri as well. So I spoke to him before I come, and after I spoke to him, I was sold on the whole Montreal play games, and then if I do well, then come back to Europe, and it went to plan. Like, mm. I come in, I play games, I done well, and then I got signed back. By an Italian club. How did that conversation go then? If you could give us like an insight to how. Come from Mourinho to Henri. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> from like the word yeah. you shared and how he convinced you. No, he just obviously nothing's guaranteed. So he couldn't say, you're going to play, you're going to play. He was yeah. like, you work hard, you'll, you'll uh, play games under me, but you've got to work hard first. So I took, took that away. I tried to work hard and that's what that's what happened. I, I must have done all right. He must have liked me. <laughs> he started playing me. So. Yeah. So just going back then, because obviously when we were in school, you were playing for England and you were playing with the, I think it was the under 18s, wasn't it? Or was it a bit higher? Was it the under 18s? Uh, the 18s, and then when I left, it was the 19s, yeah. And the type of players you were playing with, I'm right, like Saka and people like that, right? Saka, Greenwood, Curtis Jones, uh, yeah, yeah, people like that. Do you still do you still keep in contact with them, or are you like not as, you, not as close? Not as really. You? I, I, I still like. When I was away of England, one of my who I got on most with, spoke to most was Greenwood, mm. uh, Saka, Curtis Jones. I shared rooms with them, but they were never ones that I I didn't not get on with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't more more get along with like I don't know Jacob Ramsey at Villa, who's yeah. getting in the oh, squad yeah, yeah. now. Yeah, uh, Mason Greenwood. So yeah, I still I chat to Reese Williams at Liverpool. I speak mm. to him quite a bit. Yeah. Um, I, I speak to them every now and then, but yeah, I don't just chat to them all the time. What's the difference between playing for like the Spurs Academy and then going to play for England? Is there a different atmosphere around like England and your, your club level, or is it relatively similar because you're all the same age? Yeah, it's similar. We're all the same age. I think yeah. it's different when you get to first team level. Yeah. 
Oh. Um, but when you're that when you're that age, it's it's pretty similar. Yeah. Is, is is when you got called up for England sort of like your proudest achievement so far in your career, or are there any other moments that yeah. probably stand yeah. out for you? Or... Probably the day you won a third thousand. Yeah. Or yeah. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, what, what no, are like your proudest moments so far in your career? No, it's a, it's a good. Obviously, I'm proud and everything, but I think when you make your first team debut, your professional debut, that's when you become more happy because you feel like right, that's the first step now. Yeah. Now I'm on the because even though you're 18, 17, 18 playing for England, there's no guarantee you're going to go on and make it as pro. There's probably been thousands of kids that have played for England and never gone on and made it. Mm. So it's a good achievement, but. Once you play a few games in a first team, I think that's when that's my proudest moment what, what, you're on the way to what, what is that, a pro. What is that like being 17, 18, playing in front of thousands? Like, I'm 19 now and still that would overwhelm me massively. When you're a couple of years younger, yeah. you're playing in front of thousands of people who yeah. expect you to uh, play like the I, first I team. What's that like? I, I was unfortunate last year because I played, I played three games and then COVID hit, so there was a big break. And then obviously there was no fans. Um, or a few teams were allowed fans, depending on the state in America, mm. but they were only allowed like 5,000. But yeah, my first league, away league game was in front of 20 in Dallas. Um, That's ridiculous. That was, yeah, that was a bit, that was mad. What was that and then, like? What? As in from going from like playing just normal like development football then to playing professional football? Yeah, players. massive. That, that's, a, that's another reason I wanted to leave because think about it you play reserve football in front of 100 people and then they say right you're going to the first team you do well you're making your debut in Tottenham's first team and you play, you're meant to play in front of 60,000 how are you meant to Compound, transition yeah. from 100 people to 60,000 yeah, yeah, yeah. whereas I thought if I come here get some experience play in front of fans play in front of 20, 30, 40 I'll be more like more adapted to mm. then going back to Europe and playing in front of 60, 70, 80 50,000 yeah. people so yeah that was another experience that, I think with the style of, as in with like the style of playing kind of just getting used to the pace and that did that take a while to like get used to it and get up to that sort of speed no not not really I think sometimes it does but it didn't really mm. not for me it, it didn't happen uh, it didn't take a, that long that's what, what, about, what, what about when lockdown hit then so obviously you know you yeah. moved over that and then you hit that, like, how was it kind of affected? Because you know, you just discussed earlier how you know you kept in touch with your family, but after like the football mm. side of it, how did you kind of keep on sort of like keeping in fitness and in like, top shape? Yeah, I was doing like obviously everyone was doing 5k's and everything, but yeah. we had to do 5k's, send our times to the fitness, uh, the fitness blog. But then we went back and done individual training, so we were only allowed to train on our own on like a pitch. So. They were staggering it, so each player could do it, and it was it was like terrible. I hate training on my own, so <laughs> it was bad. But yeah, I had to try and find a way to keep fit. Yeah. Cool. What what's, what's been like the man management like under Thierry Henry? So like, what what type of manager is he like with the players? Or say, if you're losing at half time, what sort of team talk does he give you? Is he like a give you a bit of a bollocking? Is he more of a motivational kind of guy? What what sort of manager was he like? Oh, he, I've seen him. Give a bollock in. I've, I've been on the end of one before, but <laughs> no, it's, it's, I think that's, that's good. A manager's got to have yeah. that. Cause if you just, if you don't do that, then a player might think they've got away with one, but he could do both. He could, like before a big game, he could like talk motivationally or, or like something that will touch you. And then, uh, if you need a bollock in, he'll give you a bollock in. So mm -hmm. no, he was, he was a good, good manager. Um, and what about the uh, the Montreal fans as well? Because um, what, what was that like? You've gone from really no one knowing of like a fan base, like who are they and look like they like you and everything like that. How, what was that like? Yeah, it was weird. Obviously, come, like, coming here, I have to do interviews and yeah. some like we have to sign shirts and have pictures taken. So it's, it's very, very weird. Because yeah. as a kid, you you don't expect that. You know what I mean? Like, and then when you're thrown into it and that like fans are texting you, it's, it's very weird, but no, I like it, I like the connection. I was going to say, did you love that or that daunting at first? No, I'm, I'm, I say I'm one of them, I like to do interviews, I like to, I like to talk and do articles and whatever else, I like to speak to the fans, I like to do all that sort of stuff. I know there's, there's players out there who hate that sort of stuff, but I, I don't mind it. Did you get recognised much around Montreal, obviously, before COVID, because COVID happened, um, and but before that, when you were in Montreal, did you get recognised a lot, or is it what's it like over there with there's, the fans? There's a few times I've been out just shopping or whatever, and they'll yeah. 
they'll uh, ask for a picture. I've been in a restaurant before and I, I start speaking, and obviously my accent's different yeah, to yeah, yeah. people over there. So they go, oh, you're the new English kid. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, um, but no, it's, it's surreal at the start, but no, I enjoy it. How's your, how's your French coming along, mate? Because you were never very really good at that. Terrible. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> I, 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 I passed Spanish at school, but no, I've never done French. <laughs> I haven't really we, I learned a lot. Were you happy with last year then? Because obviously, I know you said to me before when I was talking to you, you were like, you, wanted, you obviously wanted to get playoffs, and I don't think that happened yeah. yet last season. So were you happy? No, we made we made playoffs. playoffs. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Where did you where did you uh, come then with that? We made we got I think there was seven teams who got it and we finished sixth. Okay. Or, right. Yeah, sixth. So in America it's very big. You could have the worst season, but you made the playoffs and it put the fans are happy, which I find strange. <laughs> but if you if you do that in England, you don't get away with it. But yeah. here you could have a terrible season and you make the playoffs and they're fine. W- were you happy with that season then? As in, like as a team and, and individually, were you, were you happy with it? I was, yeah, I was happy individually in my first season in pro football, living away on my own, playing 30 games. I, I was happy with that. Um, mm. I was, yeah, I was happy. And I think the team were happy to make playoffs because that is the goal at the end of the day. You make playoffs and then, then it's not out from there. So the team that finishes first in the league after the season, they don't win the league. They've then got to go through the playoffs, which yeah, is weird. Yeah. But um, yeah, so anything could happen. You could finish seventh, but then end up winning the league. So... Yeah, nice. I was getting to the playoffs, it was big. I've got to ask as well, you know, I remember, I think we were in history once, and I think you asked me who my favourite third player was, and I said Wanyama. <laughs> and I still, and I, yeah. did, and I still <laughs> stick to that. Um, how, I what is your, sure about it. Yeah, I love Wanyama. <laughs> what is your relationship like with him? Like, how is he as a person? I've just got to get that question out of the way. No, very, very good. He's, he's looked after me since I've come here. For that lockdown, I'd go to his house, he'd cook food, uh, he used to, when we were back in Montreal, he used to take me to and from training. So, mm. no, I, I get along well with it. I sit with him at dinner. Yeah. So, no, I, I get along well with it. Did you speak to him while you were at Spurs? Well, like, when he was at no. Spurs, or was it just a complete, like, new relationship? Not really. I, I don't... I, obviously, I remember him at Spurs, but I don't remember seeing him around the training ground. Mm. If I saw him, I'd say hello around the training ground, but I'd never have a personal mm. relationship like I do now. Would you say he's the closest person you're with at Spurs, or is there you wouldn't be close to the people? Uh, no, at Tottenham, I wasn't really close sorry, to him. Sorry, Spurs. Sorry, Montreal, Montreal. Sorry. Oh, Montreal. Uh, one of them, yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Obviously, you mentioned goals. Sorry, just to backtrack a bit, Louis. You, you mentioned goals then for the season was to make the playoffs. What are your goals? Yeah. Well, obviously, the new I think the new season starting this weekend, isn't it? Yeah. This obviously, well, by the time it goes out, it will be this with that weekend that it starts. Um, yeah. What 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 are your goals for this season, and also what are your goals for the next few years? Because obviously, you know, you're on loan at Montreal, um, and you'll be going back. Yeah. To, hopefully, you know, maybe going back to Spain. You don't know what the future holds. But what are your personal goals as well as the team goals for this season, and then in the future as well? Make the playoffs is the team goal. Yeah. Uh, personally, I wanna I wanna win, like uh, win things as a mm. with the team and individually, but mm. more so with the team. Like you wanna win the cups, you wanna win the leagues. Yeah. I wanna get back to Europe as soon as I can, and hopefully fight to get in the Bologna team in the Serie A. Mm-hmm. And then over the next few years is then if I get back to Bologna, then I wanna cement cement my place in Bologna's team, and then. Yeah. And go there. in the long term play for England there's lots of goals but oh. I think the short term ones are definitely made the playoffs and play as many games as I can oh, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> when, when you're yeah. about to belong then are you going to be having to fight for that first team spot or are you not sure how the picture will, will be I don't know all I know is if I do well here then the sooner yeah. like the sooner I do well here hopefully I'll go back there Course, yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you are you are you itching to kind of get back to what you just focused on uh, what, what you've got on your head this season? No, I'm focused on what what this season holds because if I do well, then everything else takes care of itself, you know. So yeah. Course, yeah, if yeah. I do well here okay. first and foremost, and then let everything else take care of itself. How has that injury been for you then as well? Because you just said it's been kind of the first major injury like of your career. How have you dealt with that like mentally and physically? Yeah, it's it, like it's not even long term, so it's a few weeks. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I'm just itching. I'm just itching to play. You know, like I was injured two weeks in Montreal, and I rushed it to try and get back for this Saturday's game. Mm. And then I trained three days ago, and I was like, no, nah, I can't. No, no. I can't jeopardize the future just for one game. You know. Yeah. So if I keep playing and playing and playing, 
I might do something else which sets me back a few mm-hmm. months. So I thought I'll take I'll take the doctor's advice, take four weeks off and then and start playing again. Is, after that. is it a twisted knee that you've done or what, what what is it you've done to it? Is it just as I, I just uh, I've, got it, I've got it jarred, so yeah, it's like yeah, a yeah. Jar. It's yeah, just, yeah. Bit sore. You don't really know, do you, mate? You haven't got a boot. It's just, 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 just been told I can't play, and that's it. <laughs> just mm. are, are you enjoying yeah. the weather as well? Because obviously, you've talked about the coldness of Tro- uh, Montreal for now, the, the, the yeah. maiden sun of Florida. No, I, I prefer it. I prefer the sun. I've been out in it all the time. But no, I hate Montreal weather, snow. And, I don't know. We've, yeah. got, we've got cracking weather today. It's absolutely boiling outside. Yeah. I'll, I'll give you a run for your money at Florida. Yeah, yeah. If, if, you, yeah. if, if you have a fancy <laughs> I mean, playing for like yeah, a. Yeah, it's humid here, though. That's, I, that's what yeah, I'm true. Yeah. It's horrible. Yeah. Mate, we've got a six a side team, you know. If you have a fancy <laughs> match, you've got a six a side team. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, I yeah. Mean, you yeah. might not get ahead of me, but I mean, we'll see. you got to learn your points. I'm the gaffer, so, you know, you're quite impressed. But um, yeah. Just going back as well, just quickly, you, you know, when you played England with, you know, Sapper and Green, really, and you obviously you played in the youth team with Skip, Parrot and White. Mm. Do you, yeah. um, does that kind of, I mean, maybe like more like Sapper and Green because they're at the heights now. Do you look at, does that like motivate you? Because obviously they're, they're playing yeah. professional football. Like, Even when, that, I, when I wanted to leave Spurs, I would look at them and think, well, they're my age, they're playing. Because one of the scouts at Tottenham come into the meeting and went, how many, how many 18 year olds do you know playing first team football? A defender. And I went, not many, but that doesn't mean I can't. Yeah. So just because yeah. there's, there's not, I mean, I can't. Yeah, exactly. And uh, it's different because obviously Sackers a winger, Greenwood's a winger, striker. So managers can take chances on them. They can stick them on for 10 minutes and mm. get a goal with. You rarely see an 18 year old defender playing because of the risk. And it's the experience as well, isn't it? It's the experience of playing with a, with a centre back. And, and the same with a keeper yeah. as well. You see it with Dean Henderson at the moment. There's a lot of like yeah. the, the argument of Dean Henderson is you know maybe not experienced enough to take David De Gea's place. Were you? Yeah. Uh, and he's still what 24? Yeah, 24 exactly. But he, but for me, yeah. I, I I think he he's more than experienced enough. You know, he's played first as long as you're playing first team football. You know, like you say, yeah. which is why you wanted to go out on loan and, and for example, or, or leave Spurs. You need that yeah. first team football to develop. Like we had this conversation. When, 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 when you were looking to sort of like when you say like Greenwood Saka obviously playing first team football in the Premier League, was it like a Jaden Sancho or like a when when was it Reese Nelson went yeah, abroad Reece, and like yeah. even even like a Nelson even like a I know he's obviously a lot older than you, but like a Chris Smalling went mm. to Italy as an English centre back to improve. Was it those sort of players that then tempted that move abroad for you? Yeah, to be honest, I didn't really. Obviously, Sancho sparked the young generation to start yeah. going everywhere, but I never really looked at someone and thought, "Oh, he's gone, I can go." If, yeah, yeah, even yeah. if Sancho, even if Sancho hadn't gone, I think I was, I'd go. I've always wanted to play abroad, so yeah. I think that that helped me. Just touching back then on Spurs, and it seems like how, how did they treat you when he wanted to leave? Because kind of like just talking to you about a little bit, it seems like it wasn't maybe, they didn't make you as love and it was kind of more of like an aggressive <laughs> treatment. Like, how did they treat you when you wanted to leave? Yeah, no, they never like bullied me or anything. Yeah. There, was, yeah. there was obviously that that sense of, oh, you're not committed to the club, we're not committed to you sort of thing. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. After that meeting I had with Mourinho, I had to go and and training that was the most awkward training session ever like i just oh. told him i want to leave and now i'm tra- uh, training so and then they wouldn't they wouldn't they didn't make when i was trying to leave they didn't make it as easy as possible which i didn't expect them to because they wanted me to stay but it took longer than it should have but yeah it's all done now, were, you anno- were you annoyed by that like did you was that like was that annoyed or was you kind of just brush it off a little bit because i've been there so long i thought and they said to me if your head's not in the club we'll let you go Mm. So I went, all right, my head's not in the club, I want to go. And then I thought, because I've said that, they're going to be like, okay. But when I said that, they took a back seat and went, oh, actually, we're not going to make it easy. <laughs> yeah. They made yeah. it up. But, yeah, that, that's, that they were entitled to do I that. Suppose- it's one of those things where they wanted you to stay, wasn't it? And it, it's like the competitive nature yeah. of first team football, like we've said. Um, and if they're yeah. thinking, you know, the central place for you in the future, and especially with a young English talent, they don't want any, you to yeah. go anywhere else, do they? And, and they want to use you if, no. if, in future if needs be. Exactly. Yeah. Which but is why that's going to happen. That was their point of view, yeah. Yeah, of course. What, of course. What, what sort of advice would you give to, say, not necessarily like professional football, but like someone who is really coming through the youth ranks, potentially struggling, balancing school social life or football. Just to get a game, well, yeah it, to just get sort of struggling what they're trying to do sort of like a 50 60 70 year old what sort of advice would you give to them 
you just got to get your head down, work, go. If you want to, if you want to be a footballer, you've got to work at football, mm. but also you've got to work at school. If if that don't pay off, people used to say that to me, Mister Milton. <laughs> um, but, oh. but I never, I never used to believe him. I don't think you do believe him at that age. It's only now looking back that if I didn't, if I didn't do all right in football, what would I do? And yeah, you've got to try and do as best as you can at both. But as I know, it is, it is hard. Do you, do you sort of regret maybe not working as hard as you could have in school because you're at the level now? <laughs> oh, like, I wouldn't. No, because <laughs> no, I've done, I done okay at school. I've passed everything I needed to. Maybe mm. if I if I didn't want to be a pro, I would have had to be better at other stuff. But I got what I needed to get where I wanted yeah. to get to. So it's prioritising which way you want to do. Yeah. Yeah. If what? you was, before you go as well, because I know you've got to go in a minute, if you could give Mike, just touch on a bit more advice, mm. but... The people that are going through like the hardest moments of their career, because obviously your career's not been straightforward and it would have been easy to force a move. Like if, yeah. when you're going through ups and downs, what advice would you give to them to kind of get out like the down stage and make sure you're progressing and keeping your head up to get like better? You just always got to keep keep playing for yourself. You know, like it could have been easy when when Tottenham were making it hard for me to go like sulk and go, oh, I'm not doing this, but I knew that I had to keep fit because another club. If I didn't keep fit, another club wouldn't want me and then I'd be stuck. So you've always just got to work for yourself and do what's right for you. Also, I'd, I'd just love that quickly. When you're playing like PE football in school, are you there to just <laughs> yeah. take the piss and just absolutely <laughs> well, just... <laughs> like, like, what, what, what sort of thing, like say you play PE in school, are you treated differently, say, by teachers or do you just absolutely just go for it, slide tackles I, everywhere, no I, one's scoring? I remember for the school team, you didn't actually play in defence, did you? Didn't you play? You played like yeah. actually outfield. Midfield. Yeah, yeah he's playing midfield. But at school PE, I hated it, even football, because it was just so like, I don't know, like my mates were decent at football, but then they would never put me with my mates. They used to put the yeah, like, yeah. so there'd be players who couldn't even kick the ball, and I hated it. <laughs> Josh is it? Josh is all right. <laughs> it was all right. I think all right's a bit of a push. Do, do, do you think you maybe contact here on Re say, look, this is guy Josh Bailey. I think he could really change. You know, potentially if, 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 if his next job if as he, manager. If he works hard, he might have a chance. <laughs> are you still in contact with Henri? Because obviously I don't mean that for personal reasons. Have you kept in contact with him? No, I, t- I texted him when he left and just said thank you for giving me a chance, whatever, and he replied. But um, nah, as you said, it's that, that player man yeah, 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 yeah. relationship. Oh, I'm yeah. gonna keep texting him. How are you? Like, <laughs> what, what are you up to? Ha- happy Valentine's yeah. Day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. But but I, no, like, if I ever need any advice, he said like text him. So, yeah. but no, I'm not gonna every day be on his case. Yeah, of course. I think that's a nice yeah, question. Leave it on, yeah. yeah. Leave it on. Yeah. So we really, really appreciate Louis. Thank you so much for giving us your time. So obviously we know you're a busy lad. So yeah, appreciate be- it. best of luck with the season as well. The upcoming season. Oh, yeah. Thank you. No, yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. Well, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll talk to you at some point. Yeah. No, thank, thank you very much. We'll just keep you know, yeah. on there. Thank you so yeah. much for watching, guys. No uh, make sure you like, subscribe. Make sure you go check Louis out. His socials will be down below. Um, well, yeah, yeah. Go, go, go buy a shirt with Binks 5 on the back. Go <laughs> yeah. do it, support it. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, thanks so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and goodbye. <laughs>